on our way to East Prussia and Danzig across the Polish corridor not to be forgotten. Danzig's coat of arms, the town bells, one of which dates from the 15th century, the tower of St. Mary's Church, followed by the Rathaus or the town hall. We visit the Artushof in the midst of other patrician houses, all of them with their curious stone terraces and beautiful balustrades. Everywhere, the exceptionally fine ironwork takes our fancy. And sauntering through the city, our sightseeing walk eventually leads us to the Frauengasse. President Chance must have his fling. Later on, we come to the arsenal with its facade of rich golden ornamentations. And here we see what is very typical of Danzig and in witness of its German origin, the gables of its houses. We see their shadows reflected on the street below, together with the spires and turrets of the city. But Danzig is not only of interest to the historian of art, it is also a highly important industrial and commercial center, a free port and has a lively industry. One might almost speak in the past tense, because Danzig today, isolated from the homeland, cut off from its base, is fighting a hard struggle for existence. Bearing witness to Danzig's importance as a harbor in olden times, there still stands the Crown Tor, where ships in bygone days were loaded and unloaded by a manpower winch. It is still in use today, but ships have become very scarce. Our harbour trip takes us out to sea and to Zapat, a much frequented bathing resort on the Baltic. Stormed at with shot and shell as we approached Gdynia. Oh, do you remember that? We really should have filmed that incident. But anyhow, here we are, safely landing, and we walk the landing stage to shore with our photographer, of course, taking a shot at the survivors. From the Baltic to the Vistula, with the Marienburg, formerly the seat of the Teutonic Order. On the outside of the choir stands a huge mosaic statue of St. Mary. Within, we have the court of the castle into which we pass by way of several drawbridges. It was here at the Marienburg that the Knights of the Teutonic Order proclaimed and followed those principles of obedience and sacrifice which were to become the fundamentals of Prussianism and of the whole German nation today. We inspect the various cloisters, refectories and dormitories of the Teutonic Knights and the reception halls where the Grand Master presided. Although connected with the history of the Marienburg, most of the colored window plates are of a later date. After an evening spent in the guest chambers of the Marienburg, this is the morning after the night before with girls selling us roses 
with which to decorate our pallid brows, we make a brave show in front of the plebiscite monument commemorating East Prussia's vote to remain with Germany in 1920. We reach the Dreilender Eck, a boundary stone just 15 years old, where East Prussia, Danzig and the Polish corridor meet. Here is the boundary, the sign says. Again the border between East Prussia and the Polish corridor, across trees spanning the road. Here farmer Schulz's house, his property, although with a stock on the roof, has been cut in two by the borderline, of which Mr. St. John gives a practical illustration by means of a cat. Leaving the border, we pass by the castle and cathedral of Marienwerder, both of Teutonic fame, and reach Schoenberg, the only castle of the Teutonic order still inhabited. The Countess Finkenstein, its present day ruler, our charming hostess, together with President Budding, have us spend a memorable afternoon there. The castle has been in possession of the Finkensteins for over three centuries. And this is the Tannenberg National Monument, erected in memory of the great battle fought and won in 1914 under Hindenburg. Not long after our stay in Tannenberg, that grand old man passed away and was entombed there with a nation in mourning. From Tannenberg to Allenstein and from Allenstein to Königsberg, our train takes us through the fertile lands of East Prussia. The landscape has a precious charm of its own. Sunlit fields in harvest proclaiming the richness of its soil. Dark forests and bright meadows give us an understanding of the East Prussian's tenacious love of home and country. We arrive at Königsberg, the provincial capital of East Prussia, and repair to the cathedral with the tome of Immanuel Kant. We see the Königsberg Castle, and on the next day, which has been proclaimed a day of rest, we motor via the amber works of Palmniken to Rauschen on the Samland with its steep forest-bound coast. A cable car with the shortest track in the world that takes us down to the shore. And as we sniff the sea air, we get ready for a dip in the Baltic. No sightseeing and no receptions today. We take a dip in the ocean or bask in the sun just as our fancy wills. 